we have been studying elasticity where we try to measure the responsiveness of the dependent variable due to an independent variable and we have looked at own price elasticity of demand and in this lecture video we'll briefly touch upon an important aspect of own price elasticity of demand and then examine other elasticities now based on values of own price elasticity of demand we classified some demand as inelastic where demand or quantity demanded does not change when price changes or people are not that sensitive to price level and we distinguished it from elastic demand where people are more sensitive to price level now suppose you are a business person and you can charge any price you want to different customers and suppose you are able to divide your customers into two parts based on the elasticities of demand one group has inelastic demand the other one has elastic demand consider for example the airlines industry what they have done is they have divided their customers of flyers into two parts one called business travelers and the other one called vacationers vacationers and according to you business travelers or vacationers will have elastic demand now business travelers when they have to travel they have to travel and they usually do so at a very short notice and hence we are likely to find inelastic demand for business travelers what about vacationers they can shop around they have time on their side and what we are likely to find is they are likely to have elastic demand so to which group of customers would you charge a higher price and to which group of customers you charge a lower price and this is what businesses do when you have a group of customers who have inelastic demand you'll charge a higher price to these customers and to whom would you charge a lower price you'll charge a lower price to people who are sensitive about price level and this is what the airlines industry does it charges a relatively higher fare to business travelers or or to travelers who travel at a short notice and this has to be compared with vacationers or people who have more time to shop around they normally end up paying a lower airfare and this is how businesses can use elasticities to set their prices now let us look at some other elasticities the first one we'll look at is cross price elasticity of demand and this is how we would represent it and what xp represents is price of the other good or cross price and what is it supposed to measure by how much percent does demand change when price of the other good changes by 1% or in terms of a ratio it will be percent change in quantity demanded divided by percent change in price of the other good and the other good could be tea or sugar or cream now this is how we look at the relationship between two goods if for some reason the cross price elasticity of demand turns out to be zero that means change in price of the other good has no impact on your demand for coffee in this case the two goods are considered to be unrelated why because change in price of one has no impact on the demand for the other good now let us look at an example where the two goods are related to one another and this will happen if cross price elasticity of demand turns out to be a non zero number and if the goods are related they can be further subclassified as substitutes or complements now what is a substitute for example you look at price of tea and demand for coffee if price of tea increases that means coffee has become relatively less expensive 
will demand more coffee or in other words cross price elasticity of demand will be a positive number reflecting positive relationship when we are looking at two goods being substitutes on the other hand if cross price elasticity of demand is a negative number that simply means the two goods are complements if price of sugar increases and if i am a drinker of sweet coffee my demand for coffee will decrease why because i need to buy sugar along with coffee so so what we should remember about cross price elasticity of demand whether goods are related or not and if they are related are they substitutes or complements the next elasticity of demand that we look at is called income elasticity of demand and the question we ask is by how much percent does demand for coffee change when income changes by 1% or in terms of a ratio percent change in qdc divided by percent change in income now look at some definitional uh, issues if income elasticity of demand turns out to be negative on its own that means as income increases you tend to buy less of it and that is the definition of an inferior good so when you find income elasticity of demand is negative or less than 0 what we are looking at is an inferior good if on the other hand income elasticity of demand is a positive number that simply means as income increases demand for coffee increases as well in this case the two goods will be called normal and normal go normal goods can be further subclassified in the following manner if income elasticity of demand is a positive number but it is less than 1 in this case the good can be considered a necessity if on the other hand your income elasticity of demand is a number greater than 1 then the good will be considered a luxury so as far as income elasticity of demand goes you should know when will the good be inferior when it will be normal and if it is normal when it will be considered a necessity or a luxury now let us look at income elasticity of demand in the us and this should make intuitive sense to you look at airline travel income elasticity of demand is greater than 1 the same thing applies to movies as in watching in theaters same thing applies to restaurant meals where you are served food here you find the value of income elasticity is greater than 1 and that means these goods are in a way considered luxury in the us and the same thing applies to hair cutting now look at goods that are considered to be essential for living or necessities and here we find income elasticity of demand to be less than 1 it's still positive but less than 1 so let me write necessities and what are necessity in the us alcoholic beverages clothing telephone services and food and so these numbers in a way conform to our expectation of what we would consider a luxury and what we would consider a necessity and this completes our discussion of elasticity of demand and next what we do is we look at elasticity of supply now in this diagram what we have is a supply curve and we know if law of supply works the supply curve will be upward sloping reflecting the fact that as price increases quantity supplied increases as well or there is a positive relationship between these two the only elasticity that we look on look at on the supply side is own price elasticity of supply and through this what we are trying to figure out is by how much percent does quantity supplied say of coffee change 
when price of coffee increases by one unit and this is on price elasticity of supply in terms of a ratio it will be measured as percent change in quantity supplied divided by percent change in price per cup of coffee now we know because of the law of supply the supply curve is upward sloping and that simply means that own price elasticity of supply will be a positive number and there are two classifications that you should remember what is perfectly inelastic supply that's a situation in which when price changes nothing happens to supply or change in supply equals zero so in terms of the value of own price elasticity of supply when we have perfectly inelastic supply this will be zero and what happens when we have perfectly elastic supply the value will be infinity or undefined now look at this supply curve which is vertical that means we have a fixed quantity supplied and the price could be anything and since there can be no change in quantity supplied what we are looking at when we see a vertical supply curve is perfectly inelastic supply in elastic supply and you should think about the situations in which we may find perfectly in elastic supply now here what we have is a horizontal supply curve and what this reflects is no change in price and this is a case when there's no change in price supply can be at any level or this diagram shows perfectly elastic supply so when we have perfectly elastic supply what we'll see is a horizontal supply curve and if it is perfectly inelastic supply what we'll see is a vertical supply curve and this concludes our discussion of elasticity thank you for your time